Hello and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about capacitors and capacitance. It's going to be a short one with a quick demonstration about the static charge between capacitor plates. Now capacitors can take all kinds of different shapes. This big bad bank of capacitors here, this came out of a little wind turbine for part of the power factor correction, smoothing out the waves, taking care of all the harmonics and all that silliness. This little guy came out of a marker wave. It's part of the flyback capacitor. This one came out of an audio system. This one here, well, this is a filter capacitor that came out of a large power supply. Providing our juice today will be our Van de Graaff generator. Now, all the Van de Graaff generator does is what it takes uh, some electrons from down inside there, puts it on the rubber belt, and then deposits all the electrons on the big shiny globe at the top. So that's going to be providing our high voltage static source today. Now what I got going on is I got one lead coming out of here and it's safely put on top of my risk assessment card pack and then it's connected to the back side of this plate. The positive side of our terminal over here this comes over and goes into this other plate. A simple capacitor is nothing more than two plates separated by an air gap or some sort of gap. Now, depending on the characteristics of that gap, it'll increase or decrease our capacitance. So, let's take a closer look at this, shall we? So, I'm going to turn on the generator. I'm going to get rid of my watch and anything else electronic out of my pockets. And I'll turn this on. And, and nothing. <laughs> there we go. Safety switch was off. As the static charge starts to build up in my Van der Graaff generator, you can slowly see the charge building up in my capacitor, which is simply two plates separated by some sort of insulator. In this case, the insulator is air. And as the charge builds up on one plate, the charge is actually building up on this one, the electrons here are attracted to the plate that is lacking charge there. And we can visually see that static charge or that force of attraction through our little silk strings. So as I move the plates closer to each other, you can see that there's a greater force of attraction because our strings are standing up straighter. As I move the plates away, there's less force of attraction and they don't quite stand at attention as much. Here, I'll turn this guy a little bit more this way. So, one of the things that determines the amount of capacitance we have is the distance between the plates. The other thing that affects capacitance is plate area. So the larger the plate area, the greater the capacitance. As you can sort of see here, you can see that the strings over here are much more attracted than the strings over here. You can also see where I'm sort of grounded that I impact the field. Now if you're lucky enough to be of Germanic descent like I am, where we have significant amounts of body hair, you can actually feel that static field on your skin. And you can see the reaction of that field as I pass through it. The distance between the plates the surface area of the plates, as well as the insulating material or the dielectric material between the plates, all impact the capacity of the capacitor to store voltage. Now, the cool part about capacitors, son of a diddly, is that if I turn this off, they will continue to store the charge. Now, depending on how good 
the capacitor is. It may maintain the charge for a very, very long time. Could be days even. That's why we usually put a discharge resistor into a capacitor bank network so that the capacitors will discharge themselves. Because this much capacitance can hold a lethal amount of charge. And that's the problem with capacitors, is they're setting there, they can hold their charge for a long time, and that can be potentially fatal if it's a high enough voltage. To discharge a capacitor, all you have to do is give the electrons a place to discharge through. So there you have it, a real simple basic demonstration of capacitance, a basic capacitor. And in all its static glory, capacitors store a voltage or electric charge. Uh, what else do you need to know? Mm. Yeah, how, how does it sort of work? Well, what happens is, is the generator, is in this case, is pulling electrons off of the first plate, this one, and then taking it through the system and depositing them on this plate. And that's what's giving us our difference in charge between those two plates. Again, by definition, a difference in charge is voltage, where one farad is equal to one coulomb stored at one volt potential. And there you have it. Till next time.